Greetings all. Uh, forgive me, I need to use a crutch today. I've got a great deal of information to share with you and a very limited amount of time to do it in. So my name is Matt Bernardis. I'm the Director of Operations for a company here in Reno that is pioneering the development of artificial intelligence-backed medicine to solve a devastating and global problem. We're pushing for a paradigm shift in the way we address the identification and management of disease, and specifically in breast cancer. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physician, I'm not an engineer, but I can say I have always had a very strong interest at a social level in breasts. <laughs> but it's through my involvement with this technology and the clinical studies we have undertaken and the results we have seen uh, that that in interest has evolved into a much more benevolent and scientific nature. <clears throat> so I'm now passionate about solving a problem uh, that a great many wonderful people are subject to um, and devastated by. So the prevalence of breast cancer is profound. One in eight women will be afflicted by the disease in one way or another. <clears throat> there are well over eight women in this audience, and I think that statement is relatively self-explanatory. The incidence rates of the disease are increasing. Mortality is following suit. Yet we have not developed a standardized solution that's identifying and managing the disease that allows for a high probability of survival. This is because we're doing a poor job of detecting the disease in its earliest stages. The process of screening for breast cancer has a number of problems. And that's from the detection modalities we are using to the politicization of the breast to financial interests. And therefore, we find ourselves in a dysfunctional state of sick care, and most of us know this as health care. It's a systemic problem that is based on palliative, reactionary medicine that woefully attempts to manage disease very late in its progression. The definition of healthcare could be or should be based on the foundation of practical, proactive approaches that will allow for preventative standards of, of uh, care and risk management. So a fact, each year one million women will be afflicted by the disease. Each year, 400,000 will die from it. And again, one in eight will experience the disease. The odds are against us, and we have a huge problem on our hands and a significant challenge to undertake. So here it is, 2013. We're still using screening modalities that are over 40 years old. They've not proven to be effective in a great many women due to a few simple factors. Some we can control, some we cannot. It's not to say that we have, do not have very robust and sensitive technologies uh, to identify the disease, but most are not accessible, they're not affordable, and they're invasive. A number of them are simply not effective in a great many women. Moreover, we are not addressing the true nature of the problem. And that problem revolves around the structure of the breast, the makeup of the breast, and that has to do with dense tissue versus fatty tissue. As an example, according to National Cancer Institute data in 2008, there were approximately 35 million mammograms in the United States alone. There were about 1 million biopsies out of that and 250,000 proven cancers. That yields 750,000 potentially unnecessary biopsies at a cost of $1.2 billion in the United States alone that year. Moreover, two-thirds of the women in that 750,000 had dense breasts. Exacerbating the problem, Screening recommendation bodies, such as the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, seem to waffle on a regular basis due to the imperfection of our screening technologies. Current recommendations are for screening on an annual basis for women over the age of 50, biannual over the age of 40, and under the age of 40, you are not recommended to screen at all. This is where the disease manifests and originates, in your 30s and sometimes in your 20s. It should be clear that the challenge does not lie in screening, but in the imaging tools that we employ. They simply are not effective enough to warrant the expense and the potential damage. To date, the mammogram is the gold standard. It's considered the best screening tool we have, but it's not allowing for proactive and preventative approaches, especially in young women and those with dense breasts. The tool simply does not work here. It's akin to looking for a snowflake in a blizzard. There's a quote by a Hungarian physiologist named Albert Sint Georgi. And he says, discovery consists of seeing what everybody has been seeing and thinking what nobody has thought. Albert won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1937 for his work with vitamin C and physiology of the human body. 
It was his rational approach that improved global health. In breast cancer screening, there's a need for an approach that is clear, concise, definitive, and actionable. In an ideal world, breast cancer screening would yield images such as that of the one behind me. And I don't think many of us in the audience have to be medically trained to see where the abnormality is in this image. To date, the best methodology we have is to identify the disease with a static, two-dimensional image that must be interpreted by a human being. That interpretation is of a subjective nature based on the training and capabilities of that human, impacted by how many mammal films they studied that day and possibly what side of bed they got up on that morning. We're only human and we're finite in our capabilities, no matter how brilliant. So we're not to this level of detection yet, but we're well on our way. So a change in focus is now warranted from that of the subjective interpretation to the objective analysis. Vino Kosla, the very successful venture capitalist, got it right to a degree when in a recent article he called for the replacement of physicians with artificial intelligence in the cleaning de clinical decision-making process. It's a bit extreme, but he does have a point. What if we could allow these brilliant physicians the possibility of doing their jobs with the greatest degree of confidence? What if we could offer them data that allowed for clinical decisions that are clear, concise, definitive, and actionable? I'm here to let you know that we can. First Warning Systems has been working on just such a solution for over 20 years, and we're on the precipice of introducing it to the world. It is the first screening improvement in over 40 years. It's simple, it's non-toxic, non-invasive, non-radiogenic, and best of all, it's painless. There's no compression with this system. It's as comfortable as wearing a bra. It's accessible, it's affordable, and it's accurate. The technology takes advantage of biological processes simply by measuring them, processing those measurements, and providing clinicians with objective data about the condition of the breast tissue. So as COSLA has requested, we are deburdening the physician by providing them an objective clinical decision support tool through artificial intelligence. Through a series of algorithms and neural networks, the FWS is able to identify breast tissue disease at its earliest stages prior to any significant harm, prior to a patient getting sick, and often prior to the need for radical, invasive, and toxic therapeutic treatments, or cut, burn, and poison, as it's known in the industry. So the FWS technology is not based on the ability to see an image. Rather, we're measuring the metabolic environment that hosts a lesion or tumor by recording and interpreting the metabolic activity of the breast tissue cells. It is known that a tumor changes the biological environment in which it resides, and that these changes begin with the transition from precancerous dysplasia to cancer in situ, which is the most curable stage of cancer. Specifically, we're looking for angiogenesis, or the formation of new blood vessels that feed a lesion site and exhibit a specific and unique heat signature, as well as disrupt the circadian rhythm of that environment. The circadian rhythm is also known as the cell cycle. It's based on about 24-hour period. Additionally, we get to see how healthy versus diseased tissues are behaving in their natural environment over time, making the testing process dynamic versus that of the static imaging that we are used to today. We can now measure and understand the difference between a healthy cell cycle compared to that of a diseased cell cycle. It is this measurable difference between the two that drives this technology. This establishes a paradigm shift in the way we screen for breast cancer providing a new risk marker that is agnostic to age, family history, breast density, and most importantly, breast density. So it's been shown that a tumor is detectable by the mammogram at about two and a half millimeters, and it has been growing for approximately nine years. Tumors are clinically palpable at approximately one centimeter of the size of a pea, and have been present for about 10 and a half years. The average size of a surgical excision is about three and a half, so four centimeters, that's about the size of a ping pong ball. About 11 and a half years in gestation at that point. In three rounds of clinical studies, the first warning system was able to identify cancerous environments and lesions up to six years earlier than the outer limits of mammography. Detections were found during the tumor latency period where no signs or symptoms were present by any other means of uh, current detection today. This allows for that proactive preventative approach and true early screening providing the ability to manage the disease before a patient gets sick. 
So this system is intended as, for use as a part of every woman's annual health care checkup starting at the age of 18. It is deployed by your family practitioner, OB-GYN, or primary care physician, essentially your first level of clinical contact. The device itself is relatively simple. It's a dynamic thermometer embedded in a bra. It consists of 16 thermistors, eight per breast, that are strategically positioned uh, at sites where lesions grow, around the mammary ducts and out to the tail of spents where our lymph nodes are and where the disease metastasizes. During the exam, the physician places the device on the patient and initializes the test. <clears throat> Currently, the test takes 12 hours, takes readings every 30 seconds. The patient is allowed to go about her day normally, save for immersing herself in water. At the end of the test, the data is pulled from the recorder device of the unit uh, and sent over the internet under strip HICA strict HIPAA standards to our central data reading service here in Reno. It takes 30 seconds to process that data and deliver immediately back to the physician an objective clinical decision support result uh, that it will allow that physician to then consult with the patient as to what the next step should be, if any. Uh, this system is known as CAP, or Computer Aided Physiological Profile. And this allows the physician the ability to drive that patient to the proper diagnostic modality, avoiding misdiagnosis and unnecessary tests. You can think of the first warning system as a smoke alarm of sorts, and it's all in the name, the first warning system. I'd like to share a, a brief story about one of the impacts we've already seen uh, with this technology through our second round of clinical studies uh, at uh, Green Memorial Hospital in, in Ohio. Nedra Lindsay was a 25-year-old nursing student at Green Memorial, and her roommate was slated to undergo this second clinical study. Uh, Nedra serendipitously, serendipitously took her place because her roommate got sick. Uh, in the study, the first warning system was put up against a screening mammogram, validated by biopsy where needed. Nedra underwent the memo, which discovered two benign cysts, one in each breast. The first warning found two very aggressive cancers, one in each breast. The objective data that the first warning system provided the primary investigator of the study the impetus to, to dig deeper and understand what the difference was between the two uh, divergent results. And after a series of validation tests, including an aspirate study, a series of biopsy, and review by a, uh, a tumor review board, uh, it was recommended that Nedra undergo a double lumpectomy and ultimately a double mastectomy. Had it not been for the first warning system, Nedra would have been sent home and most likely would not have been seen again for 15 years. Nedra is with us today, 19 years later, 100% regression, 100% remission. It is precisely this type of screening that the system has been designed for. So we know lives have already been saved, and I hope you can see that this technology has the ability to save millions more. And that is my job to make sure this technology sees the light of day. We get this into your physician's hands as quickly as we possibly can. And the foundations of solid science and rational approaches to preventative, proactive medicine. Thank you very much.